is peddling poison in our community and kill someone. Incarceration is the right answer for them. Riverside County District Attorney Mike Hestron says weak California laws are partially to blame for an epidemic killing people right here in Riverside County. Tonight, my I-Team investigation shows how severe the problem is and what it will take to make changes to this fatal flaw. He had enough fentanyl in him um, to kill almost three people. Jennifer Loza of Bermuda Dunes lost her 18-year-old son, Stephen, to fentanyl poisoning two and a half years ago. He had just graduated high school. Loza says he was left to die when he lost consciousness after taking a pill. He didn't want to die. Though. No, no, he did not. He did not. He had plans. He was 18 and young and he made bad choices and our kids shouldn't die from mistakes. They should have the opportunity to learn from him. But he was literally left just to die like he was not important. No one has been held accountable in Stephen's death. Riverside County District Attorney Mike Hestron says that's an all too familiar story that needs to change, starting with harsher laws for dealers. The laws in California are not conducive uh, to helping law enforcement deal with this problem. The problem, fentanyl. The drug can be 100 times more potent than morphine. It's mixed into street narcotics and made to look like legal prescription drugs. It's everywhere, it's in every drug and it's just horrible. People can take it without knowing what or how much they're consuming. 100% of the pills that are made by the cartels contain fentanyl, 100%. How susceptible is the valley to this? Riverside County is a, a drug corridor for the cartels. They bring their product here in the Coachella Valley. Specifically, what we find out here are stash houses, stacked from floor to ceiling with whatever kind of drug and it's basically a fulfillment center. Fentanyl is the leading cause of death among U.S. adults. More Americans between the ages of 18 and 45 died from fentanyl than from COVID, car accidents, cancer, and suicide combined in 2020. In Riverside County, D.A. Hestron says there were nearly 500 deaths in 2022. The year before, approximately 400 people died. Now compare that to 2016, when only two were reported. Where's the urgency? You know, when we're losing almost what's equivalent to a 747 a day, where's the urgency? This is our future. These are our kids, you know, and the loudest voices I hear are grieving families. Every week, 110 Californians are being killed by drug dealers distributing fentanyl. Grieving families in Sacramento last week demanding state lawmakers do more to hold drug dealers accountable. We brought these concerns to local Republican Assemblymember Greg Wallace, who says he understands the frustrations. But the holdup on new stronger laws has been at the State Assembly Public Safety Committee. Every district is losing people to this fentanyl crisis. So this has to be a bipartisan issue. There's a bipartisan approach here. There's a bipartisan will to see something get done and, and, to, and to really solve this problem. Um, unfortunately, the Public Safety Committee doesn't see it that way, but um, we uh, have confidence that we're going to be able to build a coalition moving forward of Republicans and Democrats to address this issue. Wallace's legislative director tells us this session, nine fentanyl-related bills did not advance from Public Safety Committee. If they had, the new laws would have added sentencing enhancements for criminals who seriously injure or kill through fentanyl, increased penalties for dealers who sell over social media, as well as require written warnings for convicted dealers that could strengthen future prosecutions with harsher sentences. Last week, Assembly Republicans threatened a procedural motion on the floor um, to move a bipartisan package of legislation forward um, in order to, to combat this epidemic. Uh, in response to that, we were able to get the majority party to have these bills set for a hearing. Four bills did move forward, including increasing fines for dealers by putting fentanyl in the same category as heroin and cocaine. Somebody could have 30 pounds of fentanyl and there, there's, they're gonna get charged with sales of fentanyl. That's a felony in California. 
but it qualifies under AB 109, which means they can't go to prison. District Attorney Hestron would like to see state laws get even harsher, including murder charges for dealing with deadly results. Now you're saying, okay, well, we're watching you, we're coming after you, and there are ways to prosecute you. When someone dies and I say, okay, now, now I'm gonna go after you for murder, and you're not gonna just get away with it. And, you know, it's frustrating because we're at the point where we have to wait until they kill someone before we can have any kind of accountability or punishment. Currently, there are 21 active fentanyl death-related cases filed at the county level. Not one has gone to trial yet. The DA has referred five cases for federal prosecution, one resulting in a nine-year sentence for Brandon McDowell, who sold a deadly fentanyl pill to Temecula College student Alexandra Capaluto. Her dad continues to fight for stronger laws. California has the highest number of fentanyl deaths in the nation. Like him, Loza has taken her pain and put it into helping others who have lost loved ones. She brings her son's ashes with her as a source of comfort when she tells her story. But if I can save one family from going through this, if I can save one kid to grow out of this age where they just make bad decisions, then that allows me to carry Stephen with me. That allows le Stephen's legacy to be something other than the day he died. Loza says this is a public health crisis and should be treated like COVID was with daily updates at the county level on how many people have died and where. DA Hestron wants to make it clear these cases are not overdose deaths. They are death by poisoning or drug-induced homicides. He says the days of experimenting with drugs is over. It's too dangerous. For more resources on fentanyl dangers, head to our website, KESQ.com.